Well, this is pretty cool. Kyber is back and they've got some new surprising things going on along with probably the most unique workflow I've seen yet on a platform. Get your shocked face emoji ready because again, there are some surprising things here. Okay, let's dive in. So if you've been around generative AI video for a while, you will of course remember Kyber as one of the OG players in the space. I've always had a particular affinity to that like Kyber 1.x era, uh, again, mostly because it had such a unique look. And when you would like see outputs out in the wild, you, know, you could generally like kind of look at it and say like, oh, that has that Kyber look. Mostly because as others were trying to beat that like weird and warpy look out of the outputs, Kyber like just kind of leaned right in. But they also had one of the earliest video to video creative upscalers around. It was the kind of thing where you could take your footage, AI generated or not, run it through it and end up with like up to 4K outputs that kind of had that Kyberized look. Along the way, they were adding in some new features like audio reactivity, but uh, you know, for the most part, things have been pretty quiet in Kyber space for a while. Well, as it turns out, over all this time, they have not been sleeping. Rather, they have been cooking. And what they have prepared is actually nothing short of a full overhaul. So this is the new Kyber, which they are calling Super Studio, and it, it, it all sort of works based off of these canvases. Now, initially this whole canvas view, it, it might look a little either confusing or disorientating to you. Uh, I do promise it does make a lot of sense as we work our way through it. So as kind of a helicopter view over all of this, and I'll talk about a deep dive in a little bit, uh, I'm gonna create a new canvas uh, simply coming over here. So obviously we now have, you know, the big blank canvas. Uh, in order to start generating here, we need to create what Kyber are calling flows. Uh, so to do that, you just come up to the flow menu and here is one of the surprising parts because Kyber now generates with Luma's Dream Factory uh, along with Flux 1.1. There are also a number of other modules here, including like the old school Kyber stuff. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, for now, all we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with an image to video uh, and just drag the Flux image down here. So of course we will start off with our, you know, channel Chestnut, uh, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. And then we hit their generate button, which is actually, I, I think this is the new Kyber mascot named Kiko. Um, so uh, pop that guy. Uh, and as you can see, we have now generated our man in the blue business suit. Now, if you hit Kiko again, uh, another iteration will start generating. Now, although this is an infinite canvas, like you can just kind of keep on going with it, uh, looks like there's a navigation navigation down here in the corner. You know, obviously you can get very messy with this very quickly. There is a way that we're going to take a look at in a minute to sort of help organize all of this. And now obviously we have, you know, two men in blue business suits. It also kind of looks like a, like a meme of this is how it started. This is how it's going of working a week in a terrible corporate job. But if we want to turn either of these into video, uh, obviously all we have to do is come back up to the flow menu. Uh, we're going to use Luma here, um, drop this down. And now we have all of our standard Luma stuff, including start keyframes and end keyframes. So um, let's just grab our uh, distinguished business guy um, and reprompt with just like walking down a street. And yeah, after a moment, we now have our man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. And of course, from here, we can now take our man in the blue business suit video and then, you know, use him in a entirely new flow as well. Um, video restyle seems to be like old school Kyber. So let's try that out. So that will kind of automatically load in the video file here. Uh, I just gave it a very basic prompt of cyberpunk sci-fi and played around with the evolve settings. Uh, and we ended up with results like this. Um, and like this. And I know that this isn't always everyone's cup of tea. And also to note, it definitely does not look as like weird and warpy as uh, you know previous iterations of Kyber did. Uh, all of course, depending on your prompt naturally, if, like a, if I put like plant person with a really high evolve, I'm sure that things would get pretty strange pretty quickly. I did talk to Kyber and they're, they are going to be like, you know, revamping this model as well. So, but for now, this seems to be that last generation of like, you know, Kyber's video to video restylize. And just to quickly take a look at the new creative image upscaler that's built into uh, Kyber's Super Studio. We'll take this image, which was a style experiment that I was working on in Mid Journey, kind of, you know, has that, you know, realistic, but still concepts art kind of vibe to it. I just noticed there's actually a little bit of like hand finger wonk here as well. Again, I'm not going to point that out to her. She's the one holding the dual katana. 
So bringing that into the image upscaler in Super Studio with the prompt photographic, cinematic, still realistic hair, realistic skin, female assassin with red hair, and giving that just like, just cranking the creativity scale up. We end up with this, which it looks pretty good. I mean, to be fair, there is still a little bit of finger wonk here, but again, that was in the initial output. So, you know, you can't really hold it against Kyber on that. But uh, yeah, coming in like it, yeah. I, overall, super pleased with this. If this is at all an indication of where the new video upscaling is going, I mean, that is super promising. Now, here's the thing that I think is kind of cool about the new Kyber. Um, you know, obviously we haven't done too much here, but between our man in the blue business suit and our, uh, you know, Katana woman, you can see how very quickly things can get super disorganized and you will get lost in this infinite canvas. Kyber has probably clearly thought about that and created a bit of a node system. Now, if you're looking at this and you're starting to get worried about like, you know, comfy spaghetti nodes going everywhere, uh, that's not what this is. So I think of this more as like creating buckets to collect outputs. Uh, so we begin by, you know, creating a collection up here. We can drag this in and now we have this you know blank area from here i'm going to add in two different flux workflows so again just by dragging these in uh, we can now link these together into the collection so just one way that i'm sort of thinking about it is that you could have a prompt uh here like a femme fatale sitting at a noir bar and then a cinematic shot of the atmosphere of a neo-noir bar jazz band playing in the background and you could just sort of like generate here and all of these kind of collect into a collection. And from here, we can add in yet another, you know, workflow of a Noir private eye standing outside a Noir bar um, and, you know, start generating it again, all of it landing into this collection. So it's a great way of like, yeah, just having a bucket of all of your material inspo and keeping track of like all of your prompts and settings. From here, you can add in things like the image upscaler we looked at earlier or image lab, which we'll take a look at in just one second. Now to note in terms of workflow, you'll note that it isn't that crazy. Like again, this isn't comfy. Um, like it's a lot of out nodes, not a lot of in nodes. Now, of course there are plans to add that in, but I, you know, I think they're being very careful in terms of rolling this all out as not to like super overwhelm people right off the bat. Now image lab is pretty interesting and this is kind of where we get back into the the more artistic and aesthetic styles that Kyber is capable of uh, in that, you know, you can create your own custom sort of like mini workflow within Image Lab uh, simply by adding in new elements, um, layout, face, uh, et cetera, is here. And let's just get super weird here. Uh, there's this jazz band that we kind of played with earlier in our flux outputs. Uh, let's give that a prompt. We'll bring in this image as well uh, and then run this and just see what we get. So we ended up with stuff like this, which, you know, admittedly is not great and is a little bit on the weird side, but uh, something that actually was kind of interesting is that at one point I screwed up on the aspect ratios and ended up with outputs like this, which I do think were actually kind of cool. And then continuing to experiment with like something like 916 ended up in this area. And, you know, now this is something that might be interesting to re-input back in and continue to stylize. I think that that might actually end up being kind of cool. Although I will say that this guy is playing a cello in a jazz band. And while there are no rules in jazz, I mean, this guy might get his like hep cat card revoked. Ultimately though, I do think that where Image Lab is really gonna fly is more in like examples like this, which is some of the stuff that Kyber actually provided as examples. But again, no rules with any of this stuff. So this seems to be a pretty interesting playground to like just sort of bash things together and see what comes out. And you know, generate an image in flux, uh, bring it over into to image lab, change the aesthetic of it, drop it into either, you know, Kyber's motion V3, drop it in as a first frame in Luma lab, see what happens. I mean, there's a lot to explore here. And to note, again, I have talked to Kyber about this. Dream Machine is not the only video generator that they plan on having. Given that APIs have opened up for a lot of the major AI video generators, I mean, I, I don't think I need to necessarily put on a detective hat to figure out who is going to be added into Kyber's uh, Super Studio. 
And again, I really do feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what can be done here. And so what I really like about it is that it is not a linear UI. I'll actually be back after I spend a little more time with it with a full deep dive tutorial. Uh, and actually I am speaking with some of the Kyber devs just to get some more tips and tricks out of them to pass along to you. Now here's the part that I think might be pretty awesome and exciting for you because uh, pricing on Kyber, $15 a month. Yeah, that is kind of a bargain. So, you know, for $15 a month, you get Flux 1.1, Luma's Dream Machine, uh, plus all of the other, you know, like Kyber stuff. With Kyber flexing at that price point, they really are showing that they are very much thinking about affordability. At the end of the day, given the fact that, you know, Runway, Kling, Minimax, Luma, et cetera, have all opened up their APIs, I do think that you're going to be seeing a lot of these kind of like all-in-one platforms. So a lot of it is very much going to come down to how a lot of these platforms are going to end up differentiating themselves. And I mean, to me, it feels like Kyber is really on to something here. So I'll be continuing to experiment with Kyber. Like I said, I'll be back uh, fairly soon with a more comprehensive deep dive into everything that you can do. But if you don't feel like waiting for that, I mean, obviously you can go check it out. The link is down below. In the meantime though, it's great to have Kyber back. I've been a fan for a very long time and I can't wait to see where they take this from here. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.